In this video, I will present the intermediate value theorem. This is an important property of continuous functions, and it's a theorem we take for granted. In fact, this is a theorem that you already believe in, even if you have never seen it. To try to persuade you, I'm going to start with an example as motivation. I want to solve this problem. I want to solve the equation x to the 5 plus 9x minus 6 equals 0. You can try factoring or other algebraic methods you learned in high school, and they are not going to help. In fact, it is impossible to solve it exactly. By this I mean that it is not possible to find a nice compact expression using the four arithmetic rules and roots. Just like we can solve any quadratic equation with a quadratic formula, there is not an equivalent way to solve this one. It is kind of surprising, but we can prove that it is impossible to solve it. It requires a piece of advanced mathematics known as Galois theory, but we can prove it. It's pretty cool. So we cannot solve it exactly, but we can solve it numerically. We can approximate it. We can get as good precision as we want. Um, here's one way to do it. I'm going to give a name to the function. I'm going to call this f of x. And I'm going to evaluate it at a couple of points. f of 0 is minus 6, and f of 1 equals 4. So just based on this and nothing else, if I look at the original equation and I ask an initial question, does the equation have a solution? Just from these two points, we already see it must have a solution. And it must have a solution between 0 and 1. And the reason for that is that f is continuous. The polynomial is continuous. Otherwise, it couldn't be true. So here's a graph, and I put those two points in there. One value is negative, one value is positive. So if the function is continuous at some point, it will cross the axis. It will take the value 0. Now, I don't know what the graph looks like. It could be wilder. It could go up and down many times. But at some point, at least once, it's going to have to cross the axis if the function is continuous. So that's the conclusion I did. So now I know there's a solution. The solution is 0 point something. If I need more precision, I could keep going. I can evaluate the function at 0.5. I know this is negative, And therefore, the solution must be between 0.5 and 1, because those were two original points. There's a third point. Now it has to cross the axis between 0.5 and 1. And if I continue doing this and I have enough patience, I will end up getting the first few digits. So if I need to know what the solution is, is 0.65343. With enough iterations, I'll get there. Now, as far as numerical methods to solve approximately go, this one is very inefficient. This is not a good way to do it. I don't recommend doing it this way. The reason I introduced this idea is to illustrate what the intermediate value theorem is. I told you at the beginning that this is a theorem you already believe in. And if what I said makes sense, if you believed it, it means that you have already accepted and used the intermediate value theorem. Specifically, the theorem says this. I'm looking at a function defined on an interval, and I want to know when can I conclude for sure that the function will take the value 0. And what we saw is that one way to do that is to request that the function is negative on one endpoint, positive on the other, and continuous. That guarantees it. That's all. This is what the intermediate value theorem says. Perhaps instead of looking at when the function takes the value 0, I may be looking at when it takes another value. So if I look at the real number m, and I want to conclude that f takes the value m, I have to request that it's continuous, and that takes a value less than m and a value greater than m. Or in other words, we can always conclude that the function f will take all the values between f of a and f of b. And that's another equivalent way to state this. If the function is continuous, on AB, then it takes every value between f of a and f of b. This theorem is easy to understand. Uh, we believe it's true. I hope I persuaded you of that, because it's a theorem we were already using it before we called it a theorem. It is also useful when doing other theoretical proofs in analysis. It appears in various places. However, it is difficult to prove. If we want to do a formal rigorous proof from the definition of continuity, it is quite technical. You will see this proof normally in a rigorous analysis course, where you define the reals axiomatically. In this video, I am not going to bother. I won't include a proof for our purposes. It is enough that we understand the statement of this theorem, that we understand it is an important property of continuous functions, and that every time we use it, and we use it often, we understand we are using that, a property of continuous functions.